So this slide was uh, originally created by Francis Ollet, and you're free to use this uh, slides if you want. You can uh, modify it, but if you use it, you have to open it to make it open. And this is a CB CBW uh, email and uh, announcement mailing list. We encourage you to uh, subscribe to this mailing list. It's very, very low traffic. Uh, I think Michelle only make an announcement uh, several times during the year. So it's, it's easier to keep you track our workshop. And again, um, my name is Zibin Lu. I'm from Princess Margaret Genomic Center. Uh, now it's part of HPC for Health. And HPC for Health is a satellite, uh, satellite site of Compute Canada. I also work part time under Francis uh, OICR here, here to maintain bioinformatical facility. And today I'm going to basically talk about uh, cloud computing. And in this talk, I'm going to give you a brief introduction to the cloud computing. And after this, uh, this talk, you will be familiar with our wiki. All materials uh, for the workshop will be in the wiki. And I also show you how to log in. I also guide you how to uh, log into the cloud. And uh, if we have time, I'll show you Amazon AWS Management Console. So after you go back home, if you have an uh, Amazon account, you can launch your own instance. So the first question is why cloud computing? I think the main reason is because we are dealing with big data. Uh, now our data sets are reaching the petabits scale. So one petabit is equal to equals to one thousand terabytes, and one terabit equals one thousand gig uh, gigabytes. Uh, for example, uh, a DVD movie usually about is about four gigabytes. So we can uh, in our center we bought our one petabit uh, storage last year, and we almost used up within one year. So the data is, is uh, the data size is getting bigger and bigger. So it's easier for us to move our software to the data set instead of the other way. So when when I was taught was when I learned programming, I was taught to uh, read the data into memory either in a, into a array or hash table and then process that with some algorithm and finally you write your uh, final results into the into a file but nowadays the data set is always somewhere from the net not the local so you need uh, when you think about to process the uh, to streaming data and also process data parallelly so this uh, this image was, cre uh, was created by Lincoln Stan, who is the director of uh, informatics and biocomputing platform here, OICR. And this this line shows uh, shows the uh, uh, number of base pair one dollar can generate before uh, next in sequencing, and the doubling time for this number is about nineteen months. And this line shows the number of uh, hard, hard disk storage in megabytes one dollar can purchase. So uh, compared to compare these two lines, well, okay, so we can the the storage is cheaper than the sequencing, so we can st store our data on onto the hard drive. But when next next gen sequencing came out, the number changed changed. This this line shows how many base pair one dollar can generate uh, with next gene sequencing. So this line is sharper than this line, so in the near future we'll be out of storage. 
So we are now talking about the 1000 genome. And this is basically just uh, the reagent and white lab cost. When we when we think about nitrogen sequencing cost, we also need to think about the storage and also about the uh, cost of the analysis, like salary of the bi of biofermentations. And the doubling time of the reduction of sequencing co in cost is in the many months range. And the doubling time of storage and network bandwidth is very small number of years range. And doubling time of CPU speed is about 18 months. In the very near future, the cost of sequencing a base pair will equal to the cost of star storing a base pair. So what is the general biomedical scientists to do. We are facing a lot of data. And in most, in many lives, even in, uh, and institutes, even some hospitals, they have very, very bad IT structure. In old days, the, the IT structure is built for mathematicians, for mathematicians, physicians, but it's not for uh, uh, bioinformaticians. Bio, bio, bio you really have powerful CPU but uh, less storage. So what do they go? They can write more, more grants to buy powerful hardware to buy more storage, but it, they can also look into sky, look to sky and there's something interesting over there, the cloud. And some genomic company is already there. The typical sequencing company pipeline with the cloud computing is <coughs> they get the sam uh, sample from wet lab and they sequence the sample from some sequencer. They generate the raw data and then they ship the raw data to some cloud provide cloud computing provider like Amazon and then they do all the hard work over there. And also, most people are familiar with cloud, even they don't know the term. If you ever use Google Doc, Dropbox, you're using cloud. You save your document on one, on, for example, you save your document on your laptop, you can access it from your desktop, from your cell phone. So the, star, uh, the storage is in, in the cloud. And Netflix and Twitter also use cloud computing. One example for cloud computing is from Amazon. It's called Amazon Web Services. It's a collection of web, uh, remote compute platform. And it's marketed as a, as a service to provide large computing capacity more quickly and cheaper than a client com company building a real uh, actual physical server form. Uh, the, the most famous services are the, the storage, it's called a, a simple storage service, it's called, also called S3 service, and another one is Elastic Cloud Computing, also called EC2. And if you have an Amazon Cloud, you can just launch uh, uh, EC2 instance within minutes. And also, if you have money, you can buy storage from S3. To end user, the storage is almost, is like unlimited, if you have unlimited money. And they have, at Amazon, the, the server is across, uh, across the world. And they they have uh, they cross the different uh, gr uh, different regions like in, they have service service in North America in Asia uh, in Europe and we see it's in each region they have this several zones and each zone has this multiple football fields large compute resource and basically they have this. They have this big container. If if you just you just plug in the power, and then it's ready to expand.
but we have some challenge challenges when we use cloud computing. They are not cheap. You pay you pay how how, how much uh, storage you you use, and you also pay by hour your instance. And uh, for example, our instance is called M three X large. We pay each instance twenty eight cents per hour. It's it seems not so expensive, but if you times 24 hours a day, uh, how many students in the class, so how many days, for, so at the end of the workshop, we end up a $1,000 bill. So another problem is if after class, if you forgot to t forget to turn, turn off the instance, at the end of month, you can imagine your bill. I once had a $12,000 bill in my first <laughs> I have not repeated that mistake again. <laughs> so, could you store some of your cancer data on this uh, public uh, storage capacity? Then? I'm sorry, what was that? We have here for example cancer people, so could you store it at the end? Uh, yes. It's being, the cancer data is being stored. There's a project to store the cancer data in the cloud. Is that what you're asking? Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Are there any competitor for this service? Yeah, I, 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 I'm I going to mention that uh, Amazon Cloud is just one of the pro, uh, compute, uh, cloud computing provider. Uh, Google has the com uh, cloud computing services, Microsoft, other providers, you have other cloud comp uh, providers. You can choose your own flavor. Another problem is, is getting files to the cloud and getting the result from the cloud. I just, as I mentioned, uh, I haven't mentioned that yet. So for a typical Illumina high seek uh, sequencing, if you do pair and 100 base pair long <coughs> sequencing, you may see maybe two weeks, you can generate raw data about four terabytes. So you can do the calculation. If you transfer the four terabytes raw data to the Amazon Cloud with internet, how long that will take? You can do the calculation. And this comp uh, cloud computing might not be the best solution for everybody. If you, for example, if you want to host a website on Amazon Cloud, the more people access your website, the more you need to pay. You have to pay the people download files from your Amazon instance. And also, uh, as I mentioned, there are several uh, cloud computer providers that there's no standards. So if you have instance uh, on Amazon, you cannot just transfer to some providers like Google. It doesn't work over there. You have to either f uh, work from scratch or do some some uh, do some conversion yourself and another problem is if you're dealing with personal in house information is the security is concern is one of the concerns and if you store your data on cloud it's just like a black box you don't know where it is maybe in North America, maybe in Europe. So, so if somebody, if you are asked where is your data, you cannot give a simple answer. And if the data, and in United States, they have this Patriot Act, Act, so you want to make sure you are comfortable with US government can touch that without, your, without, without giving you a notice. So basically, if uh, cancer data is stored in the US, they can have access to that? Uh, I don't think we are allowed to to store our uh, personal health information outside the country. I don't think we can do that. But I think uh, Francis just mentioned the NCBI just allow their, <coughs> their users to use Amazon Cloud maybe about a couple of months ago. <clears throat> they starting to use the cloud computing. 
In fact, Amazon is is more secure than most of universities and institutes, but still, you will go through all the paperwork to get permission to use cloud computing with your pers uh, health, uh, personal health information. So, yeah. how many years is computing? I think it's we, we have been using Amazon for several years. They, they are, the service is getting better and better. I think that the benefit is cloud computing is is extendable. It's you can launch your own instance within minutes. You don't if you you want to can contact your local computer resources, you have to. If you want to buy your own, you have to purchase your hardware. You have to go through all the paperwork. You have to have a system admin to manage your system. <coughs> we do have some advantages with cloud computing. Uh, we as I said, uh, at CBW, we have been using this uh, Amazon Cloud AWS for several years. It uh, suits our need very well. We give everybody in the room a separate uh, instance. If you mess up your, with your own instance, it's OK. Nobody else will notice that. And after the workshop, we also make uh, AMI. It's called Amazon Machine Image. So if you have your own uh, Amazon account, you can log into account, launch your instance based on based on based on our AMI, and you will have the same uh, working environment within minutes. We also get grant for a uh, grant from uh, Amazon. So if we manage our expense very well, we basically we use the service for free. <clears throat> and Amazon is working hard to make make it easier for user to transfer files to their service. In fact, if you contact them, you can even send hard drive to Amazon. They just plug in your hard drive into their server, and then you, 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 your data is ready. It's, it's over there. And also, Amazon makes it free if you upload files to their, to their server, but you have to pay for the download. And there are a lot of data set, but a uh, lot of data set exist on uh, Amazon, like 1000 genome. If you want to use 1000 genome data, it's already there. And also, there are, the, there are, there are many useful bioinformatics AMS. Uh, Amazon Machine Image exists on Amazon uh, AWS, like Cloud by Linux and uh, Cloud Man for Galaxy. And uh, we also, after uh, our workshop, we create a consult uh, consolidated AMI for, from our workshop. And if you open Amazon account, you, you, just, you can launch your own instance based on this very this useful bioinformatics AMIs. Is it free to have access to 1,000 genome data? Yeah. yeah. Uh, you don't need to pay. If you download something, from Amazon Cloud, you don't need to pay. They, they, I think they have deal with Amazon either. They, Amazon hosts the data for free for one thousand gen, uh, genome project, or they pay less. But if you want to download or download either to your local machine or to your Amazon Cloud, it's free for you. Uh, just as I said, there are many flavors cloud available. You can choose your own flavor. <coughs> In this workshop, oh, we have some tools on your local computer. We have also some tools uh, on web. And we have a lot of tools on cloud. We will help you to become efficient at trans uh, traversing this various space and finding resources you need and use what is best for you. There are different ways uh, to use the cloud. Uh, the most common way is use command line. Just log into Amazon Cloud, like log into your HPC cluster or Unix box. There's some uh, some AMI has 
a GUI so you can use web, web browser to use their tools like Galaxy. We're going to use Galaxy in this workshop. When talking about big data, big data is really a uh, relative term. This, this image is 5 megabytes hard drive, looked uh, look like in 1956. And we can imagine what, what it will be in 2056. I think Bill Gates uh, predicted once no personal computer need more memory like 640 KB. So since we have set up, we load uh, the data file uh, to AWS and then we bring, brought up uh, Ubuntu. Ubuntu is one uh, flavor of Linux. We bring, uh, brought up a Ubuntu instance and then we load a whole bunch of software for NGS analysis. Then we clone this and made separate instance for everybody in the class. We also simplified the security. So everybody will have the same login credential to log in into our instance. But when you go back home, you don't want to do this. You don't want to share your private key. You don't want to share your username and password with others. And we also install the web server on every instance, so your workspace is accessible to the world. But you, you don't want to ask your system admin to open your home directory to the world. We are, uh, we are going to use SSH, SSH to connect to our instance on cloud. SSH is encrypted network protocol for user to connect to remote machine or server from their local machine like that laptop and desktop. Uh, the message between client and server is encrypted. That means it's quite secure but that if a hacker sits between you and the server it's, there's a potential he can Get, get your data, decrypt that if he has time and compute power. So when one client, uh, SS client uh, successfully connect to the server, the client will keep a copy of the server's fingerprint. When you try to connect the server next time, the SS client will ask for the server's fingerprint first and compare the uh, server fingerprint to your local copy. If they don't match, the SS client will refuse to connect. So you are, every time you, you, you make this, you are sure you connect to the real server. Uh, the only problem is the first time. So you, uh, when you first, first connect to the server, there's no local copy. So the SS client will warning, will give you warning, says, do you want to accept this fingerprint from the server? Usually you say yes because it's the first time. And to make it more secure, the access protocol implement public key authentication besides user name and, and password. Username and password is not so secure. The public key authentication requires require two uh, uh, one K pairs. One K is one key is stored on the server side, it's called the public key. And one key is stored on a local machine called a private key. The server and the client will never exchange these keys, so there's no key transfer through the network. Message will be encrypted with the public key on the server side. And only the client with the private key can de decrypt this message. And it's almost impossible to recreate this private key with public key. So if your server got hacked, your public key is safe. And also, you, you can protect your private key with some passphrase. So if you lost this key, nobody else can access the server even with this key without passphrase. 
but the problem is if you, you lost your private key, you cannot access the server. So everything will be on wiki. So I will sh in few seconds I will show you how to log into log into Amazon Cloud. But first I want you to open the wiki page. If you have problem log into wiki, you can use Red Sticker and Michelle will solve the problem. Uh, wiki is high support sequencing, so we can open the wiki and this is our wiki page and I'm going to show you guide you how to log into the cloud so are we ready? okay so we need SS client to connect to our instance on cloud so for Linux user I suppose you know how to open terminal for Linux and Mac user we need to a program called Terminal to connect to the remote server. For Mac user, if you don't know how to open Terminal, you can go to Applications and then click Utility and then there's a black screen icon called Terminal. You can open that. For Windows users, I think we ask you to install a program called Patty. This, access client, this is the access client for Windows user. And I just got warning from Computer Canada last week. There's a Trojan version of Party available on net. So make sure you download the Party from the link we sent you. Don't just go to some search engine and choose a topic. In fact, for most for software, you want to make sure you download the software from the original are also don't just go to search engine and download some software and for Mac user when you open Mac and Linux user when you open terminal usually you, you are located and your home directory if you do a PWD which means present working directory you will see something like user or username a home your username for Linux user. If you do LS, you see all the contents, content, and your home directory. So I want to, I want to make a directory <coughs> for this workshop. You make directory called CWD by make dir c w uh, space c b w, and then. We can go inside this directory with cd, cd, cbw, and then we do ls-la, see the content of this directory, it's supposed to be empty. Uh, there, do, there, there are two special files, the dot means current directory, and dot dot means parent directory. There are always these two files, and the uh, every directory under Mac and Linux. For Windows user you can just open Windows Explorer and go to desktop and right click some white space and will you will see this oh sorry. You will see this pop up window and choose new folder and give folder name CBW. If you have problem, just use the red sticker. So I in this workshop, we are going to use a public key authentication, so you need your personal key. The personal key is on the wiki page. For Mac and Windows uh, and Linux, Linux user, you download the key for Mac and Linux. You right-click this certificate. Uh, if you are on Mac, you don't, if you don't have a right 
button, mouse button, you can just use control click and then choose save link as and save this file into the directory we just created cbw, your home directory cbw and save this file. This file is supposed to be called cbwny.pem. For Windows user, we want you to download the Windows certificate. You right click this certificate link and save link as save to the directory we created on desktop cbw. This file will be named as cbwny.ppk uh, if you if you attend the CBW Google workshop before you have to redownload this kit. The key is different for if every workshop. So for Mac and Linux user, if you do RSLA, you will see the file, the key file you just downloaded. It's called cbw.pm, and this is a long list uh, LS. So you the first the first part is the permission. You can see this file is readable to the world. So for for the private key, we need to change permission. So we do chmod 600 cbwny.pm. And then after you do that, you do ls-la again. You can see now the file is only read and readable to yourself, to the owner. For Windows user, we don't need to do this part. So a few words about uh, Linux permission. So when you do a long list, long listing, the first position is usually a D or dash. D means uh, this file is a directory. By the way, directory is a special file under Linux. And the next, next, the others are permissions. So the first three letters stand for owner permission, the next three stand for uh, group permission, and next three stand for uh, word permission. So if you if we change permission to 600, and then that means read writable to the owner only. So we make this key private to, your, to yourself. Now we we can use this key to connect to our server. And the Mac and Linux, we use a program called SSH. This SSH client for Mac and Linux. We just type SSH and dash i cbwny.pm. The dash i tells SSH to use this cbwny file as a private key. For Windows user, we just click the class sign beside connection and class, uh, click the plus sign beside SSH and click off 
and click the button, browse button, find the file you just downloaded. The file name is cbwny.ppk and then click OK. Okay, if you have problem, you use red sticker. And next, we tell the program our username. Username. We we use unique username Ubuntu for everybody in the class. So for Mac and Linux user, you just tap space Ubuntu. And for Windows user, you click. <laughs> data and the connection and then in the box besides auto login username you type in Ubuntu And then, and then, we tell our, our care the server name. So, for each student in this class, you will have separate instance on cloud. So you just up, right after Ubuntu, and uh, for Mac and Linux user, tap at CBW, then replace this number sign with your number with the number on your, on your badge. Everybody will have different number. Make sure you use this number. CBW your number and dot dynds dot info. For Windows user, you go to session and in this and at the right side there's a host name or IP address box. In this box you type in this CBW your, your number and dot dynds dot info. And then you want to save this session. For Windows user, you can tap CBW under Save Session, and then click Save. For Mac and for Mac user, we cannot save the command, but we can save uh, save the terminal. Uh, we can keep the terminal in dock. You right click this terminal icon, and then choose Option. Choose Keep in dock. Next time, you can just double click this. You can click this icon and you will find the terminal easily. 
So for Windows user, you can just double click CBW from now on and then you will be logged into your instance. For Mac user, Windows uh, Linux user, you just hit enter. Remember, I talked about the first time to connect to a server. You will be warned that the server print, uh, you don't have a server fingerprint on your local machine. You need to accept the server fingerprint for the first time. Number is less than 10 is zero. Okay, if you are logged into your instance of the cloud, you can take a coffee break. Oh, if you're in the <laughs> Uh, if you have problem logging to the cloud, just use the right sticker. And as I mentioned, we have web server installed on each instance, and you know, the workspace and the home directory is accessible accessible from uh, through the HTTP protocol. If you open your browser, you type in cbw your number dot dot info you will see the content under your workspace. Can everybody try that? 
you will not see all these directories, but you will see maybe module three, module seven. Yes? Okay. So if any if if you see content with this HTTP protocol, can you use green sticker? So I can a yellow sticker, okay. Hey, this is 50 dollars. Right? And I will propose you tomorrow. 